This is John for the Everyday Fan Sports. Today, I have the pleasure of being on the beat with Kate Short of the Women's Professional Softball League, Fast Pitch Softball League. How are you? I'm good today. How are you? Good. Thank you very much for your time. Let's jump right in. You've had an excellent softball career. When did you start playing softball and when did you realize that you were actually pretty good at it? So I started playing, I guess, t-ball when I was four years old. Uh, my parents played in college. My dad played with the Cubs for a little. Um, so I remember wanting to always follow in their footsteps and play. So I guess I really started to focus on just softball later in my high school career. I committed early, um, so I knew I wanted to continue to play softball, but I really just focused on that probably around my sophomore year of high school. So I, I, I just talked to uh, one of your teammates, Alyssa Dalton. When, mm -hmm. did, when did you start thinking about college or when did colleges start thinking about you? So I wanted to play from a young age um, in college. I always remember watching the Women's College World Series with my um, family in our living room. So I always knew that was my goal and that's where I wanted to be and I wanted to play in college. I started getting interest. So the recruiting rules were different when we went through. You could commit in like sixth grade if you wanted wow. to. So I started going to camps and clinics, probably my seventh grade or eighth grade. And then that's when I started getting offers in my eighth and ninth grade year and ended up committing the end of my ninth grade year. Wow. I mean, that's like how it, it obviously you had help from your parents and all that, but even as an eighth grader or ninth grader, like how did you have the maturity to kind of figure out the, where you wanted to go at that point? So I, I've done a lot of reflecting of my career, especially being out of college. And I was like, holy cow, how did I make that decision in eighth grade uh, or well in ninth grade? But how did I know where I wanted to go? Um, we did a lot of campus visits. We did a lot of camps. So the camps really helped me interact with coaching staff, players and get on the campus. And JMU always just felt like home. So that's just where I went. And you, re you mentioned the College World Series. You had, you had a pretty big moment in, in uh, one of the games. Um, game winning home run. I mean, is that stuff like the dreams are made of? That is in the moment. I, I guess I didn't even realize that was the, the what put us ahead. It's such a team sport and you're just focused on wanting to do anything you can for the win. Um, I actually was supposed to bunt. <laughs> my teammate, Sarah Jubis, she was on fire. She's a phenomenal hitter and she's been get she was behind me getting it done. I at the, up to that point had just been not getting on base and doing my job and producing for the team. So I was supposed to go up there and bunt. So hopefully if um, Michelle had gotten on, we move her to second for Sarah to hit in. Um, that's not how the cookie crumbled. And thankfully I was able to still swing away, but I was just ready to do whatever for the team, whatever needed to be done. So if you were supposed to bunt, what happened then? Did, was, did you just change your mind on the pitch or? or so or? Um, the player before me had gotten out. She didn't get on base. So then our coach called it off. And she said, go ahead, swing away. Good thing. It worked out it, well for all of you. It worked out. It did. So aside from that home run, was there any, um, what would be like your other kind of underrated but major uh, memory from you or highlight from your career in college? One of, I guess, my games that stands out to me um, would be when we were playing in Clearwater and we had been knocked out the previous year from Tennessee from regionals and we ended up winning and I had three home runs that game and one of them was an in the park home run. So that was a pretty big deal in my career. Um, I got to talk to Holly Rowe, which was like I was fangirling. It was it was awesome. So that was a really big moment in my career. And I always ask this, but uh, you might have an interesting perspective based on your home run hitting, but um, defensive play a game or game winning home run? It's it's tough what I would prefer. I mean, defense wins championships. I The second thing that stood out in my mind was a diving play in the World Women's College World Series that I had had. So, um, and then Odyssey's diving play is a huge defensive play. Um, but I still just, I love hitting. Hitting's my favorite part of the game. So game winning home run would always stand out in home in hitting. But the next thing that came to mind was a diving play. <laughs> now you left, um, you left James Madison with a ton of records, ton of awards, ton of accolades. Did you think that your softball career at that point was done? 
I had some options that I could go overseas and play, um, just weighed the pros and cons of being in the middle of COVID and financially um, just did a bunch of different figures. I didn't think my career was over. I just didn't know what was next. So I continued to train because I've been training for five years as a D1 athlete. I didn't really know what else to do with my time. So I continued to train and then this opportunity came knocking and it was kind of like my gut told me, you're, you're not done yet. Your career's not over yet. Keep going. Um, so I'm glad that I was able to still train and just listen to my gut. And how does it work with the WPF? I know there are two teams, the, the Vipers and the Pride. Does the league contact you or does each individual team contact you? Yep. So the teams have their general managers and they contact you. So the individual teams. And next year, we're supposed to have three teams now. So it'll be us, the Pride, and then the Oklahoma City Sparks. Well, I'm hoping for a fourth team in Chicago, but that's, that's another story. <laughs> yeah, but I'm hoping for some more teams as well. No, well... I've, I've seen the, I, I was down there, as I told Alyssa, I was down there in Peoria. I saw that the, um, the three game series you guys played down there. Fantastic. I mean, it, it was such a wonderful experience, major crowds, major enthusiasm. Um, was it like that for the entire tour? Majority of our games were packed. Um, I'm so glad that you were able to come see a game in person. Um, they were packed. They were fun. And each night it seemed like we had a different crowd. So we had primarily younger kids, but it was different kids every night. So that was really cool to see them come out and interact with them. And we even had, it was even more cool when we were signing autographs and you would see jer college jerseys, kids in our jerseys or kids in repping the colleges. So that was really special to see that. And every night it was somebody different. Yeah, the lines were ridiculously long. I mean, I'm an old guy, and I, I was trying to get some pictures with you guys, but I saw, I mean, the lines were ridiculous, and it's really more for the kids to get their autographs. So us old guys, you know, stood back. But it was, I mean, the lines were just ridiculous, and the kids re looked so happy. It was just, it was such a wonderful experience. I tell anybody to, to go out there and see you guys. Do you, um, do you have any plans for next season? So the offers there um... – my contract through May with the Vipers anyway, so I'm going to be around. And I'm just not sure right now what I'm doing. Um, I take every day, one day at a time. That's just how I've always lived life. So um, I, I want to continue to play as long as I'm able to. Um, right now I'm just focused on my day, um, and I'm back at home, and I'm coaching a little travel team. So I'm really focused with them and running clinics and lessons and stuff like that. And how is it coaching? And, and, and have, has coaching helped your game at all or affected your game at all? I think it's giving me a different perspective. I, I'm not just in my players' perspective. I see it from these – they're middle school girls now, so I get to see how they see the game and how um, they talk about their, their role models, and they think it's so cool. I sent them selfies with, like, Jocelyn and some of the other players this year, so – they were, they loved it and they think it's so cool. So it's just really fun to just get back to playing for fun and see the love in their eyes. I love the game. I have loved it since I was four years old, but just seeing it through their eyes and being able to help their journey along um, has given me a different perspective. Is coaching something that you would like to continue doing, whether that level or different levels? Um, I like the younger level. I think that I saw, we started as a 10 U team and I've went with them. So this is, we're going on our second full year. So we're in 12 U now. I think that age is really crucial to have a coach that pours into you and helps you love the game because that's kind of at the age where kids will either stop playing organized sports or they continue to play. So I really want to stay in this age, whether it's just lessons or coaching to help them stay in the sports one way or another. You know, I read, um, I read or I, I either read or, or viewed an interview with you and you had talked about when you were, when you were um, going to play for the Vipers and that um, first of all, that the first thing that I caught my eye was you said you were nervous, which I thought was really cool because mm -hmm. you were, you know, you were such a star in college and to admit that you're nervous about playing. I thought that was an excellent lesson for the youngsters out there. But the other part too, was that um, it seemed like, like a major or part of your reason, a big part of your reason, not just for the love of playing, but for the love of passing it on and, and growing the game. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I, um, at JMU, we always talked about leaving a program 
better than when you found it. So I've just taken that mentality throughout my whole life. And I would love to leave the sport better than the way I found it. So if that's expanding it for my little sister, she's at Penn State playing. So um, giving her more opportunities than I've had for my um, my 12U team. I really, this summer, I know I thought about them a lot and I thought about why I do what I do. And they were right there at the top of the list. I want to see them. They told me last night they have goals to go play in college and now they know there's pro team. So they want to keep playing. So that's why I keep playing to expand the game and to give them more opportunities than I had. Well, I have had. Well, it's funny because um, I also read that um, you you saw a Chicago Bandits game way mm-hmm. back. I forgot how old you were, seven or eight or something. Um, like, how cool is that? Then, you know, like, was that a dream then to eventually play in a professional league? Yeah. So that definitely planted the seed of me continuing to play after the college. So you always saw the Women's College World Series on TV, and then I finally went to go see an NPF game, and I was like, wait, I can continue to play. My dad played, women can play, that's really awesome. So that was always my end goal to keep playing. And then I really like to interact with my community at home. I'm from a small town. We have one stoplight in our town. Um, I've bought a house here, I, my team's here. And I really picked this spot to focus on because I want them to see you can, you can be from a small town and you can go play and you can keep playing and play pro and follow your dreams. So that's another reason. Um, I want to talk to my girls and I want to keep playing just so they can have that seed planted just like I did when I was their age. And you also started a bit of a real estate career. I do. So I'm on my second year of real estate. Well, I've done two full years. So I guess I'm going on to my third year. Um, yep. And partnered with my best friend. We, we do a lot of stuff together. We're having a pretty good year this year. I'm super thankful for all of that business and hopefully that business will keep growing. Um, with, even with softball growing. And I have to ask you, I did read about, you had a a really funny story about how you got your, I believe it was your third dog. Mm, uh, My second dog, my lab. Yeah. The Tennessee, my husband um, bet me that if I hit a home run against Tennessee, that we could get the dog. And so that's the game I had three. So maybe that's why the game stands out because I love my, my dog and um, Should he go better than the bet against you on this? He said that he's never betting any more softball bets with me in his life. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, listen, I really appreciate your time. I, I, I encourage everyone to check out um, Women's Pro Fast Pitch. I think it was a fantastic league. I, I love what you guys do. I, I encourage everybody to check it out. I mean, it, the dedication and the fun that you guys have, it just pours right into the crowd. And I've never seen, I've been to a million sporting events. And as I told Alyssa, I've, I don't see anything like I do with college softball, um, pro softball, high school softball. There's just something special about it. And, and I appreciate you for your time. I appreciate everything you do to help grow the game. And I really, if you can do anything to get a team in Chicago or get at least a series in Chicago. Uh, but if not, I will come down to Peoria. I will come to as close as, as you guys are to here. Perfect. Well, I hope to see you out there next year. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm excited to keep following your show and to see what happens with the game of softball. Thank you very much for your time and have a great night. Yep. You too. Thanks. Thanks.